Hello, my name is Michael Klein. I'm a foot and ankle orthopedist at ONS in Greenwich, Connecticut. And I'm going to talk to you today about proximal chevron bunionectomy using the Arthrex proximal first metatarsal plate. As we all know, proximal osteotomies are well established for moderate to severe bunion deformities. The hallux valgus angle over over about 30. Several have been described, the proximal crescentic, the Ludloff, others. I like the proximal chevron osteotomy, apex distal, and have used it for many, many years. In my opinion, distal osteotomies lack the power to correct some of these higher IM angles, and you're likely to have a recurrence, even though the procedure is a lot easier than a proximal procedure. And I also think that the lapidus fusion is unnecessary for many patients, and it has a longer recovery and bigger dissection, and is, in my opinion, a bit overused. So the proximal chevron has several advantages. I like a medial incision that optimizes cosmesis for the patients. You've got excellent control of the proximal metatarsal piece through the medial incision in that you can pull it medially. You've got two long arms of the osteotomy which give great stability and allow healing. I've never had a non-union. It won't really shorten the first ray, which is a big advantage. And you can allow patients to weight bear at nine days post-op without any problem. There are a few technical tips. I like to release the adductor tendon and the capsule through an incision in the 1-2 interspace. About a one centimeter incision usually does that. I think that's important. I know some people have abandoned that, but I do like that. But the workhorse is the straight medial incision from the base of the proximal phalanx to the base of the first metatarsal. Do a medial capsulotomy, resect the medial eminence, not too much, but a little bit. And then you use the plate, which comes in two sizes, and you do need a smidisi arm to plan out your osteotomy position. The plate has five holes. The central hole is an oval hole, and that's a perfect aiming spot for the apex of your osteotomy. And hold it against the base of the first metatarsal and mark it with a bovie. So when you make the cuts, the plantar arm is deeper than you think. The metatarsal, as we all know, flares down plantarwood. And sometimes if it's not quite through, you use a power rasp proximally just to smooth things down. And that'll allow you to move the two pieces relative to each other. Then once you've made the cuts, you pull the proximal portion medially, which I think makes the procedure particularly powerful in that you take out any ligament taxes, and you take the distal portion and make it parallel with the second metatarsal. Now this isn't a slide like a distal chevron. You've got to slide it a bit and you've got to rotate it. And the trick is under your mini C arm, you make the first metatarsal parallel with the second metatarsal as you're pulling the proximal portion medially. Once you got it where you want it, then you take a small K wire and pin the first metatarsal to the second metatarsal, hopefully just through one cortex to prevent any stress riser. And then I usually put another pin dorsal through the distal portion of the metatarsal into the proximal portion. Hold things in place. Then you've got a medial eminence from the proximal portion, which you've pulled medially. Sculpt that to accept the plate. It's important to make it smooth because those two proximal holes and two proximal screws will be the area that may bother a patient. So you want to make sure the plate's sitting very snugly up against the bone. I more often than not plan on using an Aiken osteotomy, but that final decision is made once I've done the proximal portion and done my distal capsular repair. The plate has several advantages. It's variable angle, it's very strong, it's low profile, and it has plantar fixation for the two distal holes, which I think keeps the plate out of the way and also creates a lot of strength to the plate and the construct. So here are a few case presentations. This is a 36-year-old woman who has fairly normal left foot, and you can see her right foot has a decent IM angle and a decent HV angle, and you can see the pre- and post-op x-rays there with excellent correction. Here's the lateral, and you can see how nicely the plate sits up against the bone. This is a 78-year-old woman. Shows you a little bit of the versatility of the procedure. She had some hammer toes, second and third, and a bunionette in the fifth. But the key is that the bunion was corrected even in a woman of this age with this same procedure. Pre and post-op x-rays, there's your lateral. This is a 47-year-old woman whose case is uh, interesting because she's got a little bit of subluxation in the 1-2 interspace proximally. But I still went ahead and did a proximal osteotomy with an ache in here, held it with this plate, and you can see the pre and post-op x-ray with excellent correction as you probably noted, she has a couple of hammer toes done as well at the same time. And that's the lateral. And finally, this is a 28-year-old woman who has adolescent bunions, 
which she decided to get corrected. And you can see that I've got an excellent correction on the right side compared to the pre-op x-ray on the left. Let me talk a little bit about the uh, perioperative and post-operative course. I like to use a popliteal block. Saphenous blocks are not necessary. We use a bulky dressing with a splint. At two days, we change that into a small dressing and give the patient a post-op shoe. At nine days, the sutures are removed, and the patient is allowed to weight bear as tolerated in a post-op shoe. At five weeks, I'll allow the patient to move into a sneaker or a slide. And at that point, we initiate some range of motion exercises. I usually decide whether this is a patient that needs a little help from a physical therapist or whether they can just follow the videos on my website and some instructions that I print up. I tell patients they can expect to be on an elliptical stationary bike, that sort of exercise around six weeks, and hopefully get back on a tennis court and run around three or four months. Of course, there's a little bit of lingering edema for up to six months. So in summary, I think that the proximal chevron osteotomy gives very powerful correction for a moderate to severe bunion deformity. It's strong. It allows early weight bearing and return to sports. It achieves excellent function, range of motion, and cosmesis. It's my go-to procedure, and I'd recommend that you try it. Thank you very much.